After that pre-chiller video that we made, talking about why here at Jaded we don't like pre-chillers, we got lots and lots of questions asking for more information about how a pre-chiller restricts the flow rate of your chilling water source and how much it, a pre-chiller actually changes the temperature of your water coming in. So we're gonna take a deeper look at it right now. To start off, let's give a little more data as to why we don't like to use pre-chillers with jaded immersion chillers. Let's take a look at this temperature versus time graph of a two gallon per minute water source entering a Hydra, chilling five gallons of wort. It looks pretty good. But now, let's add the data from a six gallon per minute chilling water source using the same immersion chiller. You can see how much of an improvement is made in the chilling speed just by using the larger chilling water flow rate it's great to use equations to figure out the outcome of a problem or to solve how much flow and how much temperature change would happen with a specific chiller. But I prefer doing ex actual real life experiments and showing you guys. So what we're gonna do is take some data points on some pre-chiller coils and we're gonna check the flow rate coming through the coil as well as the temperature change of the water entering the coil and the water exiting the coil when submerged in an uh, ice bath. We're located in Northern Illinois and at the time of filming this, it's February. So our groundwater is not gonna be good trial to use for these pre-chiller experiments. So what we're gonna use as our water source is a 15 gallon kettle that's filled with 80 degree Fahrenheit water from our water heater. Then we're gonna use a quarter horsepower sump pump to push the water through. First, we wanna determine a baseline of flow rate coming out of the sump pump in our system. All we have to do to check the flow rate is to just get a brewing bucket and we mark it off to five gallons. Then just turn on the pump and time how long it takes to fill up to five gallons. To get the flow rate, you just do gallons per minute. So you divide five gallons by however many minutes it took. In our case, it was 23 seconds, which is about 0.3 minutes. Five divided by 0.3 is about 13 gallons per minute. That's the flow rate that would be going into our jaded immersion chiller if there's no pre-chiller in line. So now let's check what the flow rate is coming out of the jaded chiller. We got five gallons of water going through the chiller in one minute. So obviously the flow rate through this chiller and with this pump is five gallons per minute. It should be noted though that the jaded immersion chillers can handle more than five gallons per minute. If you have a more powerful pump or if you're hooked up to your garden hose spigot, you'll get more than five gallons per minute going through the chiller, which will lead to faster chilling times. Now that we have our baseline numbers of what to expect in a system without a pre-chiller, let's set up the experiment for the pre-chiller. First, since we're in Northern Illinois and it's February, uh, we're not gonna spend money on ice. We're just gonna go outside and get some snow. Now we have our kettle with simulated warm groundwater. We have our snow and water mix, and we have a bucket marked off to five gallons so we can check the flow rate. Let's start with a 25 foot by 3 8 inch pre-chiller. We go from the sump pump to the pre-chiller and then the pre-chiller to the empty bucket to time it. Now we check the temperature of our simulated groundwater. We check the temperature of the snow ice mixture. Then we start the timer and fill the bucket up to five gallons. It took two and a half minutes to fill up the bucket to five gallons. So five gallons divided by two and a half minutes would give us a flow rate coming through this chiller of two gallons per minute. You can see that the difference in temperature between our starting water and the water we collected is 11 degrees Fahrenheit. So we have a flow rate of two gallons per minute and a temperature difference of 11 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we'll do the same process with a 50 foot by 3 8 inch pre-chilling coil.
So our flow rate with the 50 foot by 3 8 pre-chiller is 1.25 gallons per minute. And the temperature difference is 19 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, let's get another data point for our 3 8 inch pre-chiller experiments. How about a 100 foot? We do the same setup as the last two experiments. This time we're gonna use the grandfather to hold our snow water mixture so all of the coils of the 100 foot pre-chiller are submerged. So the 100 foot chiller took six minutes to fill up five gallons. So five gallons divided by six minutes is 0 0.8 gallons per minute for the flow rate. And the change in temperature of the warm groundwater is about 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So looking at those three data points, let's see what the graph looks like. As you can see, the longer the tubing is, the more the temperature is affected, and the shorter the tubing is, the more the flow rate's affected. Let's do another data point, but this time with a half inch outside diameter by 25 foot pre-chiller in the line. So with a half inch pre-chiller coil in line, we had 4.2 gallons per minute of flow rate going through the chiller, which is definitely higher than any of the 3 8 inch that we saw. So that's a good flow rate. However, the temperature change is pretty minimal. It's only about five degrees Fahrenheit, changing from your hot groundwater to the water you're gonna be cooling with. So even though it's going faster, it's not going to have much effect as far as pulling heat out of your wart. Of course, these experiments aren't exhaustive, only doing four data points, but it gives you a good idea of where we get our opinion of pre-chillers, considering that the jaded immersion chillers are designed for a much faster flow rate going through them to be able to drop the heat in the wart the quickest. When using a pre-chiller with a jaded immersion chiller, you're gonna either be sacrificing the flow rate of chilling water that's entering your jaded immersion chiller, or the temperature of the water is not gonna be that cold that's entering the immersion chiller as compared to your tap water temperature. This is why we say to use a pump in ice water. Then you don't have to sacrifice either the flow rate or the temperature of the water. You can do both at the same time, and this will help you get the most out of your jaded immersion chiller. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give us a like. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and share it with your fellow brewing buddies. And we'll see you along the way.